Today on The Breakdown, anytime you're playing in a cash game and you have over $500,000 in front of you and your opponent is covering you, there is the possibility, the potential for a seven-figure pot. And today, well, uh, on The Breakdown, as, as we mentioned, we are going to be having some players who have that much money in front of them and thus potential for a million dollar pot. It's Elton Sang. You may remember him. He's won big in the Triton before. We're back again, baby, but this time it's cash. And he's up against a guy named Ferdinand and Hans. You may remember Hans from such luminary moments as playing in other things like the million dollar game and stuff on Hustler Casino. So the question is, What's happening in this fucking hand? Is this good? Is this bad? Let me tell you. Shit goes off the rails quickly. Quickly, I think. Relative. Well, somewhere in there. All right, let's get into it on the breakdown. Enough. Enough. <laughs> With Grant Dennison and Jonathan Levy. <laughs> Do you think you might be overusing the word luminary when you're saying things like <laughs> luminary moments? I haven't <laughs> used it in a possible? long time. It's yeah. been a long time, but yeah. yes. Yes. Yeah. But I'm, you have to understand, I'm stretching for new phrasings and new things. I'm trying never to be boring and the same as ever, all those other lame-ass poker people out there. You know who I'm talking about. Yeah, they're always saying you know luminary and using it in the proper context. Exactly. Instead of, Luminary moment. Which your is, your is good. It's your good. other poker podcasts that are with other people who some of them may hate us, but they they Every, are cliche ridden. Here's the us. thing about other poker podcasts: yeah. they are all bad, right? And ours is good. We're the that's good the, one. That's that's we're the, the good thing. one. Everyone yeah. knows that. People talk about it. That's why we're proud to never have been nominated for any of those damn podcast awards. Yeah, we're proud of it. We're not we in do, their we're not in their boys club. We're doing the work of the people for exactly. the people. We don't give a shit about fucking rewards right. or gold clad statues right. Right. or statuettes or, or, or even, TV even time. smaller versions of that. Whatever yeah. the smaller version of a yeah. Any tiny, level. tiny any level. I'll take it. I mean, it's all good. Um, yeah, <laughs> this is like when um, Henry Cavill and Ben Affleck mm -hmm. were promoting the Justice League movie and they were in the middle of an interview, and the movie hadn't come out yet, but the reviews broke, like all the reviews came out. Just as the interview was starting, they hadn't seen them yet, but the, the interviewer had. He had seen them, and they were terrible. And so early on in the interview, after they'd been talking about it, he's warmed them up. He asked them about, you know, have they seen the reviews, and tells them how bad they are. And Henry Cavill immediately goes into this, um, you know, we don't make these movies for the critics. We make them for the fans, and, you know, and just sort of like the thing you're supposed to say, and Ben Affleck is sitting next to him and Ben Affleck just goes to this horrible, sad place in his eyes, you know, where he's just sitting there. And he's like, you can almost hear the um, hello, darkness, my old friend from Arrested Development playing in the background, you know, where he's just like, oh, my God, it's we we fucked it up again. You know, and everyone hates this movie. I had so much. I had a lot planned with this, you know, and and Henry Cavill is just doing his normal like I'm just being the guy who says the thing. It doesn't matter. I just say it. I'm doing my talking points right now. You know, I know how to handle that, and it's it's a nice moment. It's worth it's worth seeing. Anyway, that's that's what just happened. I'm relating it to this. It is. Yeah, because you were saying we don't care about we do it for the people. We don't do it for the praise. Oh, but there was no. We're not reacting to any new news of a bad review no. or anything, though. Oh no, so. no, no, no. Just the overall relative indifference by uh, um <laughs> by the awards <laughs> by the podcast awards out there. That's all. It's sort of well. The same it's kind of like Come on. if you're like. <laughs> If you actually care about quality and like some people might call you a snob, you know, because you're somebody who actually cares about the type of podcast you consume. You're not just going to put on the first podcast you find on <laughs> iTunes. No, right. you care. You curate for yourself. Right. And you're one of those people. Don't let anybody fucking take you down a peg for caring about our podcast. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> I, oh, good, they're going to chop good, this up and use it against us. I can see it now. All right. I love a good straw man argument. Yeah, you know, it's it, pretty we fun. Did it. We really yeah. nailed that one. All right. Let's 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 move on, though, into our real lives. Our real lives are talking yeah. about people playing a game that we will never play in our real lives. The Triton Invitational mm -hmm. Cash Game. Which mm -hmm. is a 1K, 2K, 4K game. Yeah. 
The money is absurd. I don't understand it. I never will. I never have. It's insane amounts of money to be playing poker for. Just insane. But you that's know, what these people are doing. If you're worth $700 million, playing for half a million bucks is like not that big a deal, right? Yeah. You want to feel yeah. alive. You're trying to feel alive. You got to play for the stakes thing, that make you feel slightly alive. The thing that's kind of confusing to me, and I'm speaking specifically about these Triton things, not yeah. necessarily about the high stakes games that happen in the U.S. That are, that are a bit lower stakes than this, is that these Triton games often have a lot of the same players. You know, like Elton Sang is one of them. Um, there's a lot of guys like Elton Sang who are playing these games all the time, clearly know each other very well, clearly play poker all the time together. Mm-hmm. How do they all have $700 million if they're always just playing poker? These guys are like 41 years old with their $700 million. Are they all just uh, Nepo babies? Like, what's going on here? Maybe. I mean, probably most of them are. Yeah, that'd be my guess. Mostly. I mean, that makes the most sense because if you have, you know, the amount of money that you should have to actually play in this game and not be staked and be playing these guys all the time for these stakes, then you would think that you'd have a lot of work to do in order to have like the empire that you've created yeah. or something, you know? You know, they could be like, El- and I have no idea Elton Sane's background, to be clear. I just know he won the big Triton thing a few years ago, right? Um, but he um, he could just be like really good friends with one of the Macau boys, for example. You know, like, so like a really good, the, the Macau boys, they all got into poker. They're like, no, Elton is, is really good at poker. And they're not. And he's really good friends with them. So they're like, oh, we'll just put you in the game. And he just is put yeah, in the game. I mean, by it's then. possible that Elton is, is staked. I don't know yeah, if he's staked I'm, or not. I have no he, idea. He seems like of the regulars of, of, of those guys, he seems like one of the better ones. Yeah. But the way he doesn't seem to care about money at all makes me feel like it's his money. Yeah. I will say. Because he just is willing to you know, light, it, light it up, you know, sometimes. Yeah. And it's, I, maybe it's not true. But for me, it's harder to do if it's anyone else's money but my, than my own. You know, I'm like a little more careful with it. I mean, I'm yeah, careful I mean, with my own money, but even more so with others, people's. Yeah. I mean, it's, I, I don't ever really play with other people's money, so I don't know. I mean, I haven't for a long time, but when I did, I like, you know, you're like, God, do I really want to do this big bluff here? Because, like, I have to have a conversation. Yeah, I think it, I think it would happen. fuck with me. I think yeah. it would fuck with me a little bit, for sure. So, yeah, I'm not saying that I know their backgrounds or anything. It's just, like, it's a it's a curiosity to me to how these people are able to play enough poker to get the skills that they have playing poker because obviously it's pretty much impossible unless you are like the top point zero 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 one percent cash game player to have a poker bankroll that supports you playing this game on your own dime just from poker money that you've won oh you really you really have to have run really good early on in order to get to that point there are not too many people who can do that that is true. And in yeah. fact, we see even like the most famous players in the world, the Jason Coons of the world are, I believe this is true. I don't know for sure if this is true about Jason Coon, but I believe it is. And I know it's true about most of the guys anyway, who we've heard of anyway, like before, you know, and are famous outside of these kinds of games that they are all staked. So I'm pretty sure Jason Coon's staked. I'm not 100%, but I'm pretty sure. I don't know for sure. I know yeah. if Bryn Kenny played in the game, he'd probably do it on his own dime, even if that's it a good was point. his last dime. That's a good point. But, you know. But Bryn Kenny's been broke guy. for a long time, right? That's one guy. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, these guys have the money to play in this game to, to some extent. Him. And it's, I think it's probably a really good game to be in if you can handle the swings. If you can be a pro who it's gets hard. put in this game, like these whales are just throwing millions of dollars around. Yeah. This... It's just, it's, it's such rarefied air. I, that's part of what's so hard for me to grasp. Mm. It's like, I go to the poker club. And when the five five game starts and people have you know played for a bit and have four thousand dollars in front of them, people are like a little nervous with their four thousand dollars, right? Mm-hmm. You know, and that's and that's the straddle in this game. It's yeah, it's just so hard to figure out. Yeah, you know, but money, understand. but you know, money's all relative, right? So, like I said, you just you just it you're is. trying to find stakes that you can feel something if you lose or win, and actually mean something to you, right? Otherwise, right. it's not fun to play. So yeah. these guys found stakes. Some of them. Well, anything can be fun if you gamify it. You know, if you if you decide to give yourself a bankroll and do the whole gamification I mean, thing. I don't know if that's true for everyone. I know that's true for you and that's true for me. But I don't know if that's yeah. true for everyone. You know. Yeah. You have to really let yourself accept the gamification. <laughs> like truly be part of it. You, you may know, just have to not... be wired a particular way, which a lot of people aren't, is also Maybe possible. So. Yeah, I don't know. Anyway. Elton anyway, Sang. let's talk about the hand. Yeah. It's a good hand. It was suggested by Casper. It's been a while, Casper. Where you oh, been, buddy? Casper Quack. Um, 
Perhaps. I don't know. It's just Casper on oh, Discord. It's just, I'm yeah, assuming okay. it's Casper Quack, but it's just Casper on Discord. Fair uh, enough. Yeah. So who knows? Okay. And as I said, it's a 1K, 2K, 4K game. Just your typical Tuesday. Uh, it folds to the button. Who is Ferdinand? Ferdinand, I don't watch all the Triton stuff. I've never seen Ferdinand before in any of the hands that have been suggested to us in Triton. And I don't think you have either, right, Jonathan? I don't, I don't believe so. We don't know anything about Ferdinand except that he's there. He's in this game. He's got 580K. Okay. He's got 6-4 of spades on the button in the 1K, 2K, 4K. He opens to 11K. Seems fine. Everything's fine so far. Mm -hmm. Hands from the Hustler Casino Live Million Dollar Game and like losing some huge, huge pots in that game, by the way. Made one of the in this game. big folds against Mariano in, uh, I think it was in that game, but it was in one of the really big games I mean, when he had top set and folded it on the river and there was just three to a straight out there and was wrong, yeah. by the way. Anyway, continue. But it's good. Hands he's got good. one. Yeah. He's got 1.3 million in front of him. Sure. Yeah. I think his hands, hands is the guy that Doug Polk said he thought was the best live no limit hold'em cash player in the world. Really? I think. Yeah. I remember hearing huh. that and being a little surprised, but I haven't really seen that much of hands play it and I don't know that much about him. Okay. So I don't yeah. know. I don't know either. Anyway, he's in the big blind for 2K. He calls Jack 10 off. Okay. Seems okay unless Elton is uh, constantly squeezing in these spots. So he's in the straddle. Yeah, I doubt. I doubt he's constantly squeezing. It's such a. It's so easy to call and close the action. He's probably doing that a yeah. fair amount at least. Uh, Elton has six hundred and ten k in front of him. He's in the straddle. He calls with ten eight off. Seems fine as well. Yep. Ten of hearts, eight of clubs. Yep. So far, these guys are playing normal poker just for you know what more than most per people make in a month for your Whatever. opening bet. But just still, think of it as a, just think of it as blinds, man. It's just blinds. That's all it is. Yeah. I know. I know. I mean, and I, and I do, but when I'm doing the analysis, but it's still hard for me to wrap my mind around that these people are actually playing with these amounts of money yeah. that can buy the amounts of things that these things can buy. I know. Like, I know. It's weird. It is surreal. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. And you know, it, conti it continuously makes me question it's, if it's real or not. Yep. You know, like yep. I, there's a little conspiracy theorist in me that's like, is this real? Like, are these guys really playing for like 10% of what they say they're playing yeah. for? It'd be like, really what? easy to do that, wouldn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Zang calls from the straddle, 10 8 off. So we've got 6 4 of spades, Jack 10 off, and 10 8 off. 39K in the pot. The flop is a good one for Elton Sang and pretty good for Ferdinand, too. 8 of diamonds, 8 of spades, 7 of spades. So Sang makes trips with yep. 10 8. Hands has two overs and a gut shot, uh, which, you know, he's in the worst shape here. And Ferdinand has the straight flush draw with the 6 high flush draw. Gut, gutter ball straight flush draw. Pretty sweet. Hands checks. I think there's a reasonable argument for Elton to lead here with trip eights. Uh, I think it's it depends on how often Ferdinand bets. If Ferdinand mm. bets like all the time in this spot, we're going to want to get a check raise in. But if he has some nuance to his game and you know decides this board is maybe a little bit more favorable to Elton and hands than to him, he and he's going to check back a fair amount. I kind of like a lead with you know this and a balance of you know some combo draws and nut flush draws and stuff like that. Yeah, I think that's fair. Um... It's the kind of board we might get some checkbacks on for sure. Yeah. Uh, but Elton does not. He checks. Ferdinand has six high, but also the the straight flush draw. I feel like it's an auto bet. Oh, here, my God. Even though it's, be weird it's not like slightly a, an unfavorable board, but it's not that unfavorable. Come on. Whatever. So he bets 15K. 15 to 39. Mm -hmm. How do you feel about the sizing? I would I would typically go bigger. Um, because it's a pretty wet board. Um, and even though like we have the draws this time, I mean, other people can have draws too, but just, it doesn't really favor us as you were saying compared to it's, it's good, especially for the big blind. I would just bet bigger to knock out some of the other stuff. So it would be nice to knock out hands hand, for example. Right. Right. You know, so, so yeah, 15 is, so I, I feel like it. I want to go like 25 here, something like mm -hmm. that. Yeah, that's like more typical sizing, I think, on, on this kind of a thing. On this type of board, three yeah. ways yeah. with a range disadvantage. The yeah. one thing people might say is because it's three-handed that you can go a little smaller, which is fair. But I feel kind of the opposite. I feel like you should go bigger when it's three-handed. Because? You have two people to disincentivize continuing rather than one. You know, there's more likely to be one of those types of hands that has a, a marginal decision based on sizing. Well, there's two things, though. One is that you probably are less likely to get two folds 
when you bet, right? So you could go smaller because of that, right? Um, and number two, uh, three hand is interesting because you get people. This is almost going to contradict what I just said. I acknowledge this before I say Good. it, but but like I'm glad. it puts this when we bet, it puts the big blind hands in a weird spot because he's got a guy behind him. So hands can't be as marginal with his calls necessarily when the board favors the big blind so, or the straddle so much, right? So we actually get more folds from hands' uh, range, I think, um, when there's a third person in with a smaller bet because Perhaps. he's got to worry about the third guy, the third guy behind him where who smacks that board pretty well, range-wise at least. I mean, I think... I think even heads up, I go bigger than 15K here. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, yeah. But, yeah, okay. I, You know, something that just crossed my mind is this is kind of an interesting spot to check back as Ferdinand. I, I, because I kind of want to explore that because it's so incredibly unexpected. And you have a hand that has equity against everything because there is one card that has equity against everything, the three of spades, um, or no, the five of spades. But it's... Like nobody's gonna expect him to show up with a six high flush draw. If if That's it true. ends up working out that he makes a hand, I think checking back you can still get paid here rather than having to bet. Um yeah, but you can see the value also. That's fair. Um and I agree with you that uh you would expect most flush draws to bet and certainly all pretty much all the combo draws to bet. And so it's hard yeah. to put him on that. Um But it's really nice to build a pot too. Like, really, really nice. And we do want to build a pot because when our cards come in that make us our draws, we may lose all the action. I mean, even though it's harder to put us on those hands, it's three-handed. So other people, you know, if they have to worry about each other, not just us, you know? Elton Sang, in particular, seems like the type of player who might suffer from fancy play syndrome from time to time. True. And that's the type of guy that I want to throw something like that at, mm-hmm. where like you end up making an aggressive action later when the third spade comes, and he's like, "That doesn't make any sense." Yeah, you know, he I, might attack I'm, it. Yeah, that's fair. That's a good reason yeah. to do it. I still overall like a bet here, but I think it's an interesting idea and something we should do. Certainly, we should do it at least a little bit of the time. Yeah, of course, betting is fine. That's what he does. Fifteen k. Hans decides to call yep. out of the big blind with a jack ten. I think that's I think standard. a raise is worth exploring. Oh, though. okay. You know, we we have trips in our range as hands. Ferdinand, I don't know anything about Ferdinand, but I assume he doesn't have just a super polar, super strong, super weak range. He's going to have some medium strength hands that are better than our hand that he's going to consider folding to a raise. We can clean up equity. You know, we don't want Elton in there with a similar hand to ours or like a seven or something like that. Hmm. You know, so I think raising is interesting. I think it's interesting. Um, I mean, I don't know if is Elton really calling a seven if we call. Maybe the best sevens, but I think most sevens he's probably just going to ditch once we call, right? So mm-hmm. once it goes back Maybe. call, like it's not a great spot. You could be drawing effectively dead to an eight. Yeah. Um, he might just fold. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know either. It is a small bet, though. He might continue just due to yeah, the size of the bet. That's true. One of the other things is it's possible Hans is thinking if, if Sang folds that he's going to lead a lot of turns. Like I would expect yeah. he's going to lead a lot of turns if it's heads up. I mean, the board isn't like, and the turn isn't like an ace or a king or something like that. That yeah. it's a pretty good idea to lead, right? That's a that's a interesting thought. That's a good plan. I like yeah. doing that. If you're not going to raise, and I th- I think I like call lead a little better than raise here because because it does smack Elton's range, and we're going to learn a lot about Elton's hand just by calling. Yeah, um, and it's cheaper, and we can still lead the turn and still get full equity on a lot of turns. Yep. So And he calls, and Elton's in this amazing spot where he's an active player. You'd expect him to raise a lot of his, you know, medium equity type draws here because of his perceived trips that he could have very Mm -hmm. easily in this spot. But he actually has the trips. What an amazing spot. (laughs) So nice to actually have it. It is pretty nice. And people are unlikely to have the only better eights that people can have, I guess... Ferdinand can have better eights. He can have all the better suited eights and even ace eight and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, but like Hans really can't have a better eight unless it's probably ace eight suited exactly. Maybe he can have king eight suited. But like, I don't yeah, think he has jack prob- eight he might suited. Have jack- he might have jack eight suited and queen so? eight suited. I don't know. Maybe. It seems unlikely. I don't know. He's pretty wide. He seems like a pretty wide player. Yeah. I mean, the truth is we sort of glossed over the fact that he called with jack 10 with a guy behind him and like 
he certainly could have folded that. Some people definitely would fold there too, right? Yeah. But I think uh, he, uh, your point of like, you get to see what Elton does and you can make plans for later in the hand. It's a hand with, with equity against yeah. a lot of things. No it's, doubt. It's fine. No doubt. Yeah. Oh yeah. No, I think it's fine too. Anyway, um, I like the call. And, and here we are, like you said, Elton's in this really cool spot where he's got an image of a guy who can lose his mind. By the way, he doesn't just have to be aggressive with draws. He's the kind of guy who can be aggressive without draws. Like yeah, he, he just, might have just go for he probably it with two has cards. something like, but he might he might have something as weak as like the ace deuce of diamonds, where he has like the back door not sure. plus draw or something sure. like that. Fair you know? enough. Yeah, like, but yeah. that's like that's essentially an airball bluff, like you know. Yeah, um, not Nick airball bluff, although that too. But just like yeah, I got nothing here, but I'm going for it because it's this is better for me than for you. So it's really nice to actually have it this time. Yeah, like you're and saying, he does raise. You got to raise when you have it if you're going to raise when you don't. Yes. So he makes it fifty k. Yep. Uh, which is pretty good sizing, I think. 50 over 15, 39 initially. It's nearly a pot size bet. Pretty good. I think it's fine. Um, Ferdinand <laughs> is is kind of a poopy spot for Ferdinand, though. It's a, like, like you can't really fold, but this is not exactly the hand you want to have right now, the six high flush draw. You just want the five of spades so badly. That's what you want, really. <laughs> just make things easy. You know? I mean, look, I agree with you that we'd rather have better spades for sure. Yeah. That's that's what you mean when you say the six high flush draw. I'm just translating yeah. for the audience. Or, you know, a flopped full house. Oh, sure. Yeah. Yeah. Of course. But this is still one of the better hands we can have on this flop, which is nice. Um, and, yeah, we'd rather have better spades so we don't have to be up against a better spade draw, which we can be up against here. But Ellen's the kind of guy, as we were just saying, who can have all sorts of things when he raises. So... If a spade comes, like, we still are usually going to have the best hand, and we don't have to worry too much about it. Obviously, once in a while, we're going to get cooler there, but mostly we're just going to have the best hand, right? Would you rather have this hand or aces with no spade as Ferdinand? This hand. Okay. Absolutely, this hand, because I'm going to know. First of all, I can. I don't think I would ever play this hand super aggressively right now because the board is paired, um, but... Like, this is the kind of hand where we might put in money on the turn and then just miss. Like, there's lots of ways to play the turn, of course, but we might just call a turn bet or put in money on the turn, miss, and not have to put any more money in on the river. With aces against a guy like Elton saying, we're kind of forced to call down a lot. And so this is we're going to be in a much more binary um, spot here with um, our 6-4 spades right we're either gonna have six high most of the time or have a very strong hand like a, a straight or better one or the other most of the time there's not too much in between so that's i like that do you think ferdinand it, or not necessarily ferdinand but the players in ferdinand's spot here should develop a three betting range for this spot the problem is what hands for value are like and i don't mean this i don't mean combo draw value i mean actual made hands are we three betting it's really hard to come up with anything. Are we three betting pocket sevens? That feels like the most obvious value hand to three bet. That would be the most obvious one. I, I feel like in practice, that rarely is a three bet hand. Like, even though I agree with you, maybe in theory it is. Like I, I understand that. And I understand all the reasons that three betting this board is problematic. I'm wondering if it's a mistake that as like an intellectual community of poker players, yeah. we don't have enough three bets in this spot. It's a fair question. I'm just, I just want to come back to pocket sevens for a second with it. Um, okay. Against a guy like Elton Sang, who we've been talking about can be super bluffy and all this stuff. We're in position. Would we really raise? Would we really want a three bet when we really have a super strong hand? I think we absolutely wouldn't. I think we'd want to give him a chance to put all the money in as much as right, we possibly could. I'm trying to think more of the long game, you know, the meta game impacts of it and being able to three bet hands like six high sometimes would be nice. Yeah. You know, it'd be nice if we could just win the hand right now sometimes with six high. And in order for that to be the case, we also have to have value and, you know, other types of not quite value also. Yeah. It's hard to, I mean, I don't know if we can really have very much three bets on this board and three handed with Elton in the straddle being the razor. I think it's really hard for us to have that many three bets. I think we can three bet ace eight pretty comfortably for value. Elden is going to be three betting preflop with seven seven a lot of the time in this exact yep, scenario. That's true. That's true. And also we could just so. decide like if we have ace eight and he has seven seven, we're, it's just a cooler and you know so yep. be it. Like because he's going to have other eights and we're trying to trap those eights, right? Yeah. Um, 
But we, we really, again, Elton Sang's the kind of guy where you're going to have less three bets probably and more calls with, you know, when he's attacking you because he has so many attacks. Maybe that's wrong, are we just letting are, do, are we just letting Elton yeah. Sang win this war then? Yeah, maybe you know? we are. Like, maybe we if are. We do, if we're doing it that way, I yeah. think we have to, have, we have to present the threat, yeah. you know? Yeah, that's fair. We, we need mutually assured destruction to keep the world going. Right. I like that. Um, yeah. I mean, this is not a bad hand to do it with in that we have six high. Like, I like that yeah. a lot. You know, if we had ace high, I would be more inclined to want to call. Um, one, because he could have worse flush draws. And yeah. like ace high could just be the best hand, you know, and that'd be kind of cool. And also we could incredibly cooler him later on if we have the nut flush draw and the, and the spade comes, right? If he yeah. actually has it. Um, so that's, that's a hand not to do it with this is, so this is a better hand than that. And it is a combo draw and it's unlikely that Elton has very many full houses, right? Eight, yeah. seven is there. Sometimes he can have seven, seven. Um, I guess quad eights is possible, but feels very unlikely. All these things feel like he probably isn't raising those that often. I mean, I think a he's little. most likely just got eight, seven for his full houses and he's probably less likely to raise that on the flop than trip eights because he's so invulnerable mm -hmm. and right. he'd be worried about losing action. And he wouldn't want to chase away the spade draws. He'd want the spade draws to get there. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't know. I, I kind of feel like we can raise here with this hand and I want to include some other stuff. I think mm. maybe having a seven in our hand is a good bluff. The problem is yeah. the lack of equity against trip eights. That's a real problem. Um, but it at least well, blocks the full houses. I mean, look, if we three bet and get called, I assume we're not putting any more money in though, right? Like very often with a seven. Like we're not gonna be like, let's bet again on the turn, right? No, I know. But what I'm saying is with this hand, with six, four, oh, space, at least okay. we can actually win against some calls eventually oh, yeah. at, sh at showdown. Right. You know, right. That Instead is of true. by bluffing them out of it. That is true. The one thing, of course, that can happen here is we could get blown off the hand entirely. By three Which betting. is not so bad when it's just a six yeah. high flush draw. It's and it's not a paired like, board. Um, it's, not a, it's not a monster. I know it's nominally a straight flush draw, but that doesn't mean it's actually a monster. Yeah. Yeah. On the paired board specifically, right? Yeah. Yeah. A counterpoint is $35,000 to call. We're super, super deep and we're in position and Elton Sank bluffs a lot. And we could really get there. And that's yeah. not so bad either. No, I think calling is the normal play. Yeah. But okay. as I have... Recently been on this podcast, I w I'm the guy who wants to try to explore the things that are probably bad but worth <laughs> worth looking at. I you know? agree with you, though, that like we got to be careful not to let Elton Sang win the war. Like The mutually yeah. absurd destruction thing is, is important. And that, so, so that's a, that's a metagame consideration to all of this, I think, which is important. Like To yeah. consider, like, maybe I should freaking three bet. I need to have some three bets against him when he does this if he's going to do this a lot. I mean, in cash games, when it's an iterated game that you're playing against the same people over and over, there's kind of a softer version, but more long-term version of like the tournament table captain thing that happens where people react differently to you over time if you've shown them certain things mm -hmm. in poker. Of course. And in a cash game, I found this to be happening with people that I've been playing for years. They've changed how they play against me over time based on of course. me taking aggressive actions against them. And they're yeah. like, oh, fuck, I can't do that anymore. I, you know? I made a play once against a guy. In my limit holding game, my 2040 limit holding game, this is like 10 years ago, 12 years ago, back in the day. Um, I did it once and it was just a slight, it was just a non-standard play, but it messed him up for the next two years against me. We played three times a week against each other. He played differently against me for the next two years and it was incredible. Yeah. And like, I got, a, I got to get away with things. Like I got to, I, he got less value against me for two years because of one thing I did once. It was awesome. It makes some sense, right? Like yeah. I think there's a lot of, we're, we're maybe discounting this concept a little bit too much when we're talking about cash game hands because especially when it's with players you're going to play with for a long time because you know that if you're in a game with regulars and there's like a regular that you're like that guy seems pretty good i need to pay attention to what he's doing and he shows down a hand that's like that's fucking interesting that's going to stick in your head and that might affect how you play against that sure. guy in the yeah. future yeah no doubt yeah so anyway i don't think calling is bad I think folding would be bad. I think three betting would probably be not the accepted norm yeah. and probably, probably lambasted by the community at large, but I think it's an interesting idea. Anyway, he calls. Okay. Hands ends his experiment. Yeah. And he's done. Yeah. I don't think I've ever seen hands win a hand. I don't know how Doug Polk thinks he's so good. <laughs> uh, 
You can see how hands could really be in trouble here. Like when he's looking to hit a nine and nine, eight is a full house, you know, yeah. like that could really be bad. Oh, it's a very obvious full. Yeah. At this point. Yeah. He's, he's done. He's out of here. Yeah. Ferd, uh, Ferdinand at least has something or is a complete psycho willing to float in this spot. Right. You know? Either way, whatever. We have Jack yeah. High. We're out. Yeah. Cool. Pot is 154K as pots are in the trade. Right. Just whatever. after the flop, that's just what they are. It's, in, um, it's a use Aston Diamonds. Martin. Right. It's a terrible Aston Martin yeah. that I would use as my toilet. It would be my toilet car. <laughs> <laughs> it's a car for the dogs. No, the dogs get to play in that car. That's where the dogs play. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Anyway, the bad, the the dogs that are shitty, the shitty dogs, yeah. not the well-bred dogs right. that I really like. I'm trying to sell their offspring to yeah. to Arabian royalty. Um, anyway, 154k in the pot. Eight of diamonds, eight of spades, seven of spades. We've got six four of spades for Ferdinand in position. Elton raised the flop with trip eights, eight ten off. The turn is the jack of spades. So Ferdinand makes his flush. Yep. Elton has a gut shot to go with his trips, but he knows the gut shot is probably meaningless. Uh, you know, the trips are kind of like it's it's hard for the gut shot to matter. It right. matters against bigger eights, I guess. Right. Ace but eight. That's the only thing. King eight yeah. suited. That's where it matters. Right. But he, that's right the only now, thing it matters if you're Elton right now, you think you're mostly up against over pairs, right? And stuff like that. Over pairs and sometimes a flush now. You, of course. You would certainly think. And sometimes 9-10. 9-10 got there. Yeah. It's possible. Yeah. Um, true. All the draws come in. That's true. But like over yeah. pairs are like not great. I mean they're good. They're not. If they're they're good for us if we if we're up against them. But like the over pairs themselves are like not. So how do you want card. to proceed now, as Elton? As Elton? This is uh, probably among the worst cards in the deck. I mean, I think we're supposed to continue. I think we're supposed to bet. Like we're supposed to target all the over pairs and bet. I really. I mean, this might be a player dependent thing. If I don't know anything about Ferdinand, which I don't, but let's assume he's not a guy that I assume is a whale because he's playing on Triton and I've never heard of him before. Let's assume for a second he's just an avatar on okay. the internet. Yeah. I'm expecting him to fold his over pairs. If he has a spade, if, if he has two kings with the king of spades, you think he's going to fold? We could target it all depends. his over pairs with a spade. Is he we? good or bad? If he's bad, he's going to fold. If he's good, he's probably going to have to hold on with the, the spade versions. I mean, I think if someone has two aces with the ace of spades or... Kings with the king of spades, I think good or bad, they're probably calling most of the time, right? I think everyone's calling. They're just going to feel yeah, obligated to call. Certainly two aces with the ace of spades isn't folding, right? No, I don't think that hand is folding. Yeah, no matter what. And I, I think that's true for kings and possibly queens. I think it's no who likely, going back to having Ferdinand profiled as a whale on Triton, I think it's likely that his combos of made flushes far outweigh his combos of over pairs at this point. Why is that? Um, because he's just a guy who's playing on Triton and opened the button. Like, I, I don't think he has... I, th I think he has all of the flush combos, pretty much. In he the probably deck. has a lot of flush combos. That's fair. Yeah. Um, I think, though, we have to remember that we're Elton Sang, and we have this crazy, spewy thing where we're going to get more hero calls from people than most of the rest of the world, right? So yeah. I don't know that over pairs are going to be super inclined to fold against Elton Singh. Now, this is admittedly one of the worst cards in the deck for over pairs, especially over pairs without a spade. It's, it's just a hellish, horrible card, unless yeah. you got two jacks. It's obviously it's a bad card for Elton Singh. It's also a bad card for the hands he's targeting to get value from. It's true. It's true. Um, but I think, we should, I think we should bet and continue to... No, I don't think we need to bet big. But I think we should bet and continue to inflate the pot and try and get called. We should bet small and target over pairs, especially over pairs with the spade in them. So, like, I think we bet sixty five thousand or something. Sixty thousand. I don't think. What's the plan? Yeah. What's the plan for the Deuce of Clubs River? I think a slightly bigger bet than the turn. Again, okay. still targeting those over over pairs. I think we have to make those bets because they're going to check back if we check, right, on these boards. This board is so brutal. How is Do we that? expect to get called by those on the river? I mean, I understand why they would call on the turn. They at least have a draw if they have the spade with it. But on the river, if it's the deuce of clubs, do we expect to get called by those hands? I think Elton Sang expects to get called by those hands, yeah. And also, we're not, we're not going to charge them a huge amount. And so I think they're hmm. going to find it irresistible to getting 4-1 to one or 4.5-1 to one or something like that to call with their aces or kings with a spade in their hand a lot of the time. The thing that even. worries me about that plan, yeah. and this is not a huge concern, but it's something that I've run into as a player myself, is like you have to assess your opponent's talent and willingness to act on their reads before doing something like that because 
if they read into your sizing and they do it correctly, because like you're doing this based on your hand, right? The whole thing you just described is based on Alden saying having having trip eights, not a flush, being a little bit concerned about the types of hands that can get called by. Right. Yeah. We're, like, we're targeting I, a particular range with this. I'm bat, concerned yeah. about my opponent making an above the rim raise, and me just having to fold the best hand when I size it like that. I mean, I hear that, but I feel like in practice that doesn't happen very often. You're right. It's going to happen a little bit, and sometimes we're going to make a fold that's going to be really annoying. I mean, um, I, I don't play in the Triton, but like that happens to my opponents a lot. I will tell you that much. Like I, I am turning lots of hands that are so downable into a bluff when sizing tells me they are no good. I mean, and if like you, I, 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 again, like if you think about like all, even the high, really high stakes poker that you watch, and you've been watching more of it, you were telling me like at least a little bit, yeah, a little bit more. I feel like I don't see that play very often in these cash games. I just don't see it. I'm not saying it never happens, but I feel like it's pretty pretty rare. Maybe it maybe it is. I do it a lot personally. Like that's maybe fine. that's why it's top of top of mind for yeah. me because it's like that's what I'm saying in practice. I'm, I'm, I just don't think it's a big a a real thing to like that you have to defend against as opposed to trying to get value. Like once in a while that's going to happen. No question about it against better players for sure and you're going to make a bad fold and it's going to suck. But Probably on balance, we get if we bet the right the size where we target the overpairs and those overpairs. If those overpairs are actually calling us, and we're out and saying, I think they probably are, especially if they have a spade in their hand. I think they are. Then we're probably making money. It's probably a profitable bet, which is really what we care about, right? I mean, we yeah. want to make the most profitable bet, but hopefully, this bet is profitable. Period, which I think it is. Mm-hmm. That's my that's my guess. Well, Elton saying is going to check. Okay, because we're on the turn, and he's going to yeah. check. Okay, that's fine. Yeah. You know what? It's a terrible card. I can't hate checking here. We can go into check call mode if he, if he bets. If he doesn't, we'll bet the river on you know, safe rivers, right? This is where things get saucy, Jonathan. This is Are you ready to know. to get a little spicy and saucy? I'm ready. I know you don't like spicy food that much, but maybe you can warm up to it for okay. the next 20 minutes or I so. I had all the hot one sauces, so I'm I'm a new man. Right. Let's You've go. changed. Yeah. So when you're when you're back in Portland in a couple of weeks, we're gonna go get some spicy, spicy food. We were you at like we yeah. Uh, you saw me eat a spicy wing not that yeah. long ago, That's and true. it was it was challenging. Anyway, let's, let's get, get back to it. Some of that legendary Portland Thai food, but get it like Thai no, spicy. I don't. You want to get Thai I don't spicy? Don't enjoy it. Let's move on. <laughs> <laughs> okay. In the in the pot of 154k, it's checked to Ferdinand, who now is the six high flush. Okay. And you could get real tricky and check Come back on. and hope that Elton was the reason being all of the things that you've been saying about Elton, right? That he's known as an action guy who's going to put in a lot of bluffy stuff. Like he might have an air ball or an, effectively an air ball, like drawing dead against our hand type of hand. Yeah, he might. So, but, but he really might have an eight and be checking because the, one of the worst cards in the deck just came in. I, I agree. Or a seven that he decided he wanted to just like. Yeah, clean up all of his equity with on the flop, and then he got called. Um, I think as a normal, you know, way to live, we should have a very high frequency bet spot here. Like we should I mostly agree. bet. Yeah, I agree with that. I'm just wondering if Elden Sang is a guy that has enough bluffs. I don't know if our profile on Elden Sang is accurate enough to yeah. know for sure if this. I don't is, know, but it, but let's assume that it is for okay. a second. If he's this guy who's like just got so many bluffs, he's at least a candidate to check this hand back against. I know it's a vulnerable hand. I know we lose value against trips by checking back, but if Elton is crazy bluffy, it it could be good to do sometimes. Like especially if we want to slow him down in spots where we don't have as strong of a hand as this, as, as mm-hmm. far as the metagame is concerned. Okay, that's interesting, and probably we should do it a little bit for those reasons. But the times he has the hand that he has, trip eights, I think we can reasonably guess that we're going to get called on turn in river a lot. Right, even the, unless the river's horrible, the river's a brick. The river's the deuce of clubs. I think he's calling with trip eights. You know, just because it's too good, because he's obviously not beating any value. It's absolutely too good to fold. Yes, in these games, and I, I'd be really, really shocked if he finds a fold. And I think we just have to. I think the exponential growth of the pot and thus our bet size on the river that makes that where we where we could reasonably target trip eights on this kind of a board. It's so much better to have bet the turn so we can bet bigger on the river, but still have to feel like a reasonable size, right? Like this isn't where we check back the turn and then try and make up for it on the river by betting two and a half X the pot. Like Mm -hmm. he may actually find a freaking fold with some of those eights now. Like I don't want that. I want to build the pot normally so we can just go call, call. And, you know, maybe he thinks, 
Maybe he thinks we're overvaluing and overpair. Maybe he thinks we're bluffing with the ace of spades in our hand. I don't know what he thinks, you know. Um, maybe we have an 8-2 and we're chopping sometimes. Yeah, I guess we could be chopping sometimes. Um, anyway, I think we should bet most of the time. But I think so it, too. But I, I agree. It's interesting to check a little bit here and there to keep him on his toes. And if you're thinking about the long game, you got to do that a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, Ferdinand does bet. Okay. For all of the reasons. He bets 75K. And I think I know what Elton Seng is doing when he does what he does. Okay. And it, this is where things just get really saucy. He makes it 150. He min raises with okay. his trip eights. Yeah. Explain to me what you think he's doing. I'm. I'm curious. I I think he's already trying to rep a full house. He's he's willing to lose the overpairs now because he probably doesn't expect to get any money from them beyond the 75k anyway. Mm-hmm. And he's trying to get 910 and flushes to consider that Elden might have a full house because what he's doing is setting up a pretty good sized river shove here. And if you had something like 87 or Jack 8, you might think, how can I get all of the money? And this is a pretty interesting way to go about getting all of the money. Hmm. Yeah, that's fair. This is one of the ways you could try and get all the money if you have it. That's true. Um, but like going, just betting the turn, you know, with reasonable sizing, like, you know, 80% pot on turn also could do it. Pretty easily. Yeah, he could have bet 125k, or even he could have gone full pot and yeah. bet 150k himself. Yeah, um, it might be too. The problem is, I guess, like on that card, you're really not supposed to bet huge, right? The jack of spades, you're yeah. supposed to bet small, right? So maybe, yeah. maybe that's where he's like, ah, like I'm supposed to bet small here. So what are we doing? Kind of a thing. Why don't you give me your your yeah. take on this? Because you're always more cynical and skeptical about how well people are playing hands. So. Um, <laughs> Am I not? Yeah. Just talking about the conversation we were having before this call. Come on. That's part of it, but it's also kind of true overall, I think. I mean, I'm also... All right. I, I, I am, about. I'm, a, I'm similar to you in that way, but I think you're more so All right. that way. All right. Whatever. Anyway. What, go on. What do you think Elton Sang is doing? I want to... Okay. Forget what I said. Yeah. Try, try to look at it clean without thinking about what I said. I okay. Guess. Well... I wasn't thinking what you what you said at all. I was thinking that, um, or what I am thinking is that he is trying to charge the big spades more. I mean, the single spade hand more, like two kings with the king of spades. He's like, oh, you only bet half pot. I want to bet more. I want more money in there. And you can decide I'm bluffing because I've got a crazy image. If you fold your big spade, that's not the end of the world. Um, but either way, I want more. So I... My thought wasn't that he'd be bluffing with this hand in this spot. I wouldn't think he would think he could succeed to fold out a hand as strong as a straight or a flush with, just by clicking it back. And I understand he's setting up the pot size bet and the threat lives, yeah. but it's also just a click back right now, right? And so we're we're offering like three and three to one or something on the call, um, more than that even, right? Four to one on the call. Uh, Again, against could the flush be, or straight, I just don't think they're folding. Could it be a little bit of Sean wintering it, hmm. where this keeps his options open for the river? Like, not o- like there's only a couple hands that Ferdinand could have that are really huge problems for Elton, which is Jack Eight and uh, and Jack Jack. Those are obviously huge problems. Yeah, seven seven is not great. Eight seven is not great. Those are they're all very unlikely hands. They're none of them are very likely to be in but, Ferdinand's hand. But they're possible. But they're possible. But if Ferdinand has his much more likely hands that might have Elden beat, it's a flush or a straight, right? And mm-hmm. Elden can beat those hands on the river with if the right card comes. Right. And if he doesn't beat those hands on the river, he can wrap a full house if he wants to. This at least keeps his options open. If he check calls, it's, it's a lot harder. Okay, that is... I mean, if he had 7-7, seven, seven, he could totally check call and still... I mean, I guess he keeps his options open in that he... He can bluff it, you mean, right? Right. I mean, like, <laughs> he might be concerned that if Ferdinand has something like he has, like the 6 high flush, yeah, and he check and Elden check calls, and the river is like a king of diamonds, he might be concerned that he will have no opportunity to right. try to bluff that hand off of, of the hand. It might go check, check. Like, wait, if, if the really? plan would be to, you to, think, to wait, be wait, to wait, check. Th- I just want to make sure I, I heard that right, that, I, that I'm getting what you're saying. 
So you're saying you think if Elton check calls the turn that a flush is going to check back the river? I don't believe that. I don't believe Elton maybe believes not. that. Yeah, maybe or not. A, pro, maybe a straight. I don't even think a straight. I, don't, I can't imagine a world where, either, where Elton would think a flush would check back if you just go check call. And I want to push back on one other thing too. Um, the Sean wintering it thing. There's, yeah. a, there's a danger if you're Sean wintering it here. Now, maybe this is just all happening on the fly and fair enough. But like he checked on a card that is, should be scary to all, some of the continues on the flop for Ferdinand, right? Like two red queens are probably checking this card back. Like a lot of cards, a lot of hands are checking back. Yeah. And it's possible even the over pairs with a spade are checking back here. Yeah. So then we're not Sean wintering it, right? We're just going check, check a lot. Um, so I'm not sure if that's what he's doing. I'm not saying he isn't. This is a very surprising raise to me that I don't yeah. really get. So I think he's doing it for value, but may, it could be a weird combination of a bunch of stuff. Maybe and that's yeah. sort of what you're talking about, right? Um, right. I think if it was Sean Wintering, though, wouldn't you, and Sean Wintering, of course, for pe sorry, for people who haven't been listening to us and remembering everything we've said for the last two years, Sean Wintering means you bet so that way you keep your options open to either bet again or not. You can represent, you can represent an uncapped range because you kept betting. Now, the check raise does do that, but you're now counting on your opponent to bet so you can check raise. Instead of, you would already check raise the flop. If you bet the turn, you're already sort of Sean Wintering yeah, it. Yeah, that's a reasonable point. It's just a hard thing to figure out, I guess, why it is Elton would do this. very confusing to me. Yeah. yeah. Um, my first thought when I, when I read it, because you had typed up the notes, I haven't seen the hand, um, was that, oh, is Elton overvaluing his hand? It feels like he's overvaluing his hand on a card that, he, that he's like, he just thinks Fernand's got a lot of overpairs, I guess, and he wants to charge the single spades in his hand, I guess. But he could have just bet the turn then and done that. So I don't know. I think it's a very strange, super fancy play. I'm not really sure what we're getting out of it, at least yet. I mean, I know there's going to be a whole river, so. Yeah. Anyway, it's not comfortable for Ferdinand. Nope. At least there's that. That's, nope. That's, Elton's got that going for him. Like, Ferdinand is sitting there definitely thinking, like, there's a really reasonable chance that I need the five of spades to win this game. <laughs> there's, there's a yeah. very reasonable chance. Yep. But at least I have an out against everything. I have one has, out for sure. And I'm up against the guy... Who doesn't have to king have it? Five of spades. Unless he has king five of spades, then well, we're in trouble. Yeah. Um, well, yeah. the five of spades would be our out then. If the five of spades comes on the river, we'd be like, "Hey, the deck is foul. Give me my money back." <laughs> um, but like, Let's, this is this is the guy though that where we where we feel a little more comfortable having the the very low flush in this spot, right? Yes, but if we remove ourselves from all the twists and turns and mental gymnastics we've done to try to figure out why yeah. Elton is doing what he's doing, and we just sit in Ferdinand's seat, we could easily think that we're not beating any value. Yep, I agree. I would imagine, if it were me, it would be hard for me to think, like you're saying, even Ace-8 would check raise once we decide to bet. Yeah. Right? Like, I would think Ace-8 would just call. If it wasn't yeah. going to bet itself, that it would just decide to check call, and it doesn't want to put too much money in because it would be concerned about the continuing range. Right. Yeah, so I, I agree with you on that. It's just so weird. And, but Ferdinand ultimately decides to call. I, I think that must be the Occam's razor right thing to do here, yeah. but it just it feels, it feels shitty, which like, that's to Alden's credit, right? Ferdinand made his hand, and he, it still feels like, I don't like this. So at least there's um, that going for Elton. Yeah, yeah. I guess so. That's great. Uh, yeah, I think... A term... Uh, go ahead. A term I've been hearing thrown around uh, among the... When I've been watching these games, I think it was referred to Alan Keating in Another Whale and No Gamble, No Future. I think John Robert Balland used the term. I don't know who coined it. But Elton Sang is an unsafe player. Hmm. And I think it's a really good term. Yeah. You know, those guys who are like... Absolutely. Maybe maybe it's usually used for lesser players than Elton Sang, but players of his ilk who are like super aggressive and can make the game high variance at any point, they might not be like a winner over their lifetime, but for you at any given moment, it's like, oh, that's yeah. an unsafe player. I oh, feel yeah. unsafe in sure. this hand against this that. player. You know, against yeah. those types of people, unless you have the nuts, you generally feel a little bit of tingle, right? Yeah. And like, but... Like we're saying, like a flush is probably just a must call here against this type of player and yeah. against this player in particular. Um, it, I think it just has to be a call. Honestly, that's my favorite new poker term I've heard mm. since Phil Locke invented upstuck. 
I think is. Did he invent that? Good for yeah. him. He invented felted and upstuck. He's like really? the poker dictionary master. Felted. Yeah. That's impressive. Yeah. How do you know he invented yeah. that? It's well known. I never heard of it. I'm a poker guy. You know, you would think you would yeah. think you would know that. Fair enough. What do you yeah. think is a better term, felted or uh, or upstuck? Felted. Yeah, it's more ubiquitous. Yeah, upstuck's a great term though. I feel like people have been saying felted for twenty years. Phil Locke's been around for twenty years, man. That guy's old as shit. Is he? I feel like he's yeah. a little kid, a little baby. <laughs> so cute, <laughs> little cutie. But I, I really like unsafe player because I feel like yeah. it really well describes exactly what it describes. Phil Locke is a wonderful speaker because he says things that he says words and combinations that have never been uttered in human history. Yeah. And I like that about him. Yeah. I remember, I still remember on high stakes poker back in the day when Tom Dwan first started playing and was making all these crazy plays. He said, Tom Dwan, I'm so glad to be in your orbit. Yeah. And like that just became part of like something that I might say sometimes because yeah. it's such yeah. a good thing to say. Agreed. You know, anyway, Ferdinand calls, He's got six, four of spades on the eight of diamonds, eight of spades, seven of spades, jack of spades board. Elton has 10, eight, no spade in his hand. So he's drawing to a full house in order to win the hand uh, yep. at showdown. Pretty good. The pot is 454K. Things are fucking weird because Elton has check raised both flop and turn. So weird. In two very different spots where the flop felt so obvious to check raise and the turn felt so much not like something that you would check raise. Yeah. The river is no help. It is the queen of clubs. So here we are. How do you want to do this? Do we, should we just talk about what happens and then break it down? I yeah. think that's probably the easiest way better. to do this one. I think it's better. And it helps us understand Elden's motives. Uh, and I'm not sure if they changed over over the course of the hand or not. Okay. But Elden moves in for 373k effective. Yeah. So he wasn't just trying to like get the check check river because sometimes that's like the free river play sort of like maybe Ferdinand is more likely to check back if. Like, that's something we didn't consider yeah. on the turn is maybe Elden was trying to make it so, like, if he was beat, he would have a shot to hit his full house and win. And if he didn't, he might get the check back because it's a scary, weird spot for Ferdinand if he has a flush or a straight. Maybe. 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 I don't know. Like, you're less than a pot size bet back, right? I mean. Uh, okay. I guess we should explore this for a second because I want to ask you, like, legitimately, if you're in the spot with Ferdinand's hand and it goes to the river and Elden doesn't do this jam and he checks... Are you betting your six high flush? Yeah. yeah. You are? Okay. Yeah. I've got less than a pot size bet. I'm up against Elton Sang, who absolutely can have trips. Although, wait, would I think he could check raise me with chips? Sorry, let me think a little deeper about this. I mean, he check if I call. I I think Elton Sang is capable of making a lot of calls, like a lot of hero calls, because because he makes a lot of big bluffs. Usually the guys who make yeah. big bluffs make a lot of hero calls. So assuming I'm right about that, I would be I would absolutely shove it. If I'm wrong about that, then I would think I would check back. Yeah. Well, either way, we don't get to know. I would feel a little bit afraid of betting with the six high flush. Yeah. I'd, I'd be a little concerned about that. We could be up against the straight, though. We could get value from a straight, too, which totally makes sense all the way through, except the check I mean, the raise is a little is weird, we get... but... What if we get if we're gonna get called though? I mean, like you're saying, we have a pot size bet back that infers that you would bet it all, right? Yeah, I think we've. I think we should bet big. Yeah, betting small is I weird, guess man. Maybe we can get called by a straight. I think if we get called by a straight, like it should only be if there's a spade in the hand. Okay, probably from well, a tactical perspective. He can have that, and if he has trip eights, he may be inclined to call because he blocks full houses and stuff. Yeah, but he check raised the turn, and he's really not supposed to have a straight or trip eights. I know. You're right about that. It is weird. It is weird. I think against anyone who wasn't super wide, I would check back pretty quickly. Yeah, I would. I mean, my, my default is for sure to check back. Yeah. But against the people who are going to make hero calls and are wide and do weird stuff that I don't understand, which clearly Elton is in that category, I'm more inclined to go for value. Yeah. Unsafe player. Yeah. Anyway, Elton moves in for 373 <laughs> into 454. Sure. Sure. So we're going to talk All about right. um, Fern, Ferdinand's. I think, uh, we, uh, yeah, I'll just say what happens. Ferdinand yeah. calls with with relative haste. Yeah. Um, and this leads me to believe, like Elden, very quickly tables his hand after Ferdinand's hand and says, "I, I think he tables his hand. I don't remember. He might muck." But anyway, he says, "Why did I try to bluff you?" Mm -hmm. And like very genuinely, you know, it's not like he was going for value with trip eight. That's what I was trying to ask. That's what I wanted to ask you because if because Ferdinand calling really quickly means Elton could then know that he's beat because he got called so fast. That's possible. But the, the commentators 
Mm-hmm. Who, I don't really know who they are. I can't okay. remember. We're like very clear that it was a bluff as really? well. They thought okay. it, they thought he was bluffing. Yeah. Okay. And then Elton says that. So let's take him at his word for now. Okay. We can we can look at it further if we want to. That's fair. So let's assess both things here. Uh, I mean, when Elton check raises the turn and then shoves the river, it kind of paints a picture that he really did kind of turn his hand into a bluff starting at the turn. When Ferdinand decided to bet the 75K, I think, is when Elton decided it was time to turn his head into a bluff. And maybe it had multiple purposes. Maybe it was a little bit mergy on the turn where he thought maybe sometimes he can get called by an overpair with a spade still. Maybe, hmm. you know, at, at the same time as set up this play against hands that now have him beat. It's possible. I guess. I mean, that feels like that's a lot. That's giving him a lot of credit for like understanding these ranges to such a deep degree, like on the fly, like maybe, maybe that's just going on. It seems hard for me to compute that that's what it was on the turn when he did it, but I don't know because I am confused by the turn check race. Admittedly. I'm also confused by this river shove also. And I understand he's claiming it's a bluff and we're going as if it's a bluff. So if it, what are we trying to fold out here? Are we attacking just other eights? We're trying no, to attack we're eights and straights? Flushes. I think flushes for sure are part of that, part of what okay. we're attacking. So, so let me just, ask you this. Okay. And this is not to advocate for any one player or another. It's just a legitimate question. Yeah. What's a better hand to call with, Ferdinand's hand or aces with the ace of spades? Well, since we wouldn't have thought that Elton can have trip eights when he check raises the turn, the answer's got to be aces with the ace of spades, right? You Knowing think. that he is capable of that, the answer is clearly Ferdinand's hand, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, so there you go. So with that, prior to no, the knowledge of this hand, I would say aces with the ace of spades has got to be better. Mm-hmm. But then I would yeah. be like, so, oh, my God, he's trip eights somehow. What a disaster. If we give, if we give Elton maximum credit for like theoretical knowledge and ability to okay. implement it. Okay. This could be a legit merge bet. If that wow. is the yeah, case. Wow, yeah, 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 yeah. That is true. That is true. Yeah. Try and fold out one file, fold out the better hands, get called by the worst hands like aces with the ace of spades. That's cool. And when he gets called really quickly, he's like, oh, my bluff didn't work. Because yeah. that, that part of the range that calls yeah. quickly, obviously I'm bluffing against, right? Right. But if the guy tanks and calls... Maybe I'm maybe not bluffing anymore. Yeah. 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 Maybe I win. Maybe we're so that, chopping. That would, be, that would be maximum credit. Yeah. Uh, it's hard to imagine that that's really what's going on, but it's cool to imagine it. Yeah. It's cool <laughs> if it's, it's true. By yeah. the way, another thing that he could be bluffing is uh, eights that are chopping with him, right? He could be bluffing nine eight, for example. Um, that's, yeah. that's the most obvious one, really. Um, I guess ten eight. Is, is similar. No, well, t- I think 10 8's the only chop with him, right? Because it's. No, 8 8 8, Jack Queen. You're right. Yeah. So 9 8 and 10 8 are the yeah. only ones. And maybe lower 8s. Maybe there's a few. 6 like eight, 8. 6 four. 8 suited. Yeah. Yeah. Eight, maybe five. maybe 5 8 suited. I don't know. But 6 8 suited for sure yeah. can be there. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. So he could be folding those out, which would be great to win the whole pot. And that's really hard for those hands to call again on the river. Yeah. Really, any eight is going to really struggle to call on the river. Maybe maybe ace eight with the ace of spades is going to call. Um, yeah. But there's that not... hand has to call. That hand has... against the player like yeah. I'm saying. I think, I think that so. Hand has to call. That, that's clearly a better hand to call with than six four of spades. Yes. No doubt. No yeah. doubt. Um, so. Uh, yeah. So maybe it's a cool merge thing, like you're saying. Maybe it is. I don't know, man. It's really, really strange. Let's let's jump to Ferdinand for a second here. Okay. What do we think about him calling quickly with the six high flush? Well, it tells me that Elton saying probably made a mistake. Uh, that's part one. <laughs> if he was really bluffing. Yeah. Yeah. If he was really bluffing. Yeah. Which I believe he was. I, I that's that's okay. my inclination. Sure. I'm not saying he wasn't. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's a bad spot with the six high flush usually. It's Against most players, against this line, the double check raise, pot size, river shove line, the six high flush is yeah. not often going to be the best hand against you know the general population. But think about the really spewy, unsafe players that you play against. Yeah. Against those guys, we're calling, right? We don't probably. love it. We don't love it, but we're calling. Yeah, we probably are. 
I think we just are. I am. I know. Yeah. I, I know. I would probably I don't, think of a few of the same people right now. And I, I, know I don't I'm know if we're winning those people. I don't know if we're winning money by calling, but I think we are calling. Um, we might be. We it might, depends on which unsafe guy it is, right? And like Elton Sang is among the more thinking unsafe guys. True. Which I don't know if that helps us or not. Really, right. I don't know either. To be honest. I mean, if we're folding this hand, there's just so many hands we're folding. Like, right? Yeah, against this line, we should probably have a lot of folds. It's an incredibly strong line. We should be expecting a lot of shoves on the river when he check raises the turn, though. So when we call yeah. that turn bet, we should know this is coming most of the time. Not all the time, of course. He's going to have some checks, but most of the time. So when the river is a safe river, because there's a lot of bad rivers, right? The board could pair. Yeah. Another spade could come. Those are, unless it's the five of spades, those are disaster rivers where now we have to fold. But yeah. when the river, when the river you know, is, is our friend, is our companion, as it is here, then I think, I think when we call the turn knowing the shove is mostly coming, we can't actually follow the flesh. Right. I think it's a mistake. When when the river is our Pikachu to our Ash, Ash Ketchum, then that was what I was to... trying to say the whole time. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Right. Otherwise, otherwise we should just fold the turn and stay out of this whole situation. If we're going to fold the shove on the river on a friendly river against this opponent, forget forget the unsafe player. I just came okay. up with a better new term. When the river is our Pikachu. You know, I think that's... I came up with the unsafe term or the better term, which was when the river is our companion. That was that was the real, that was the no, real. That was yeah, but I took it to, made to, along the the next, to the next level, you know. No, you didn't. Like Antonio Sfandiari and Philok were probably talking, and and Sfandiari was like, "What? Well, yeah, I was down to the felt." And Philok's like, "That's good, that's good. I'm gonna call that felted." Who made the better? Who did the, who did the better thing? Me and me and Philok. <laughs> <laughs> no, it doesn't work that way. <laughs> yeah, I think I think Antonio so, would agree. As well. I think you're right. Against the unsafe players, we have to make this call on the river when it doesn't uh, do an automatic negative impact. Like sometimes Elden has Queen Eight, and that sucks. But whatever, that's life. Right. Um, yeah. Or Jack Eight. Yeah. Sometimes. Right. I'm just thinking about the companion river part of it with the Queen. So mm. yeah, oh, I yeah, think I see. once we're here as Ferdinand, we have to make this call. It's just you get in, you get in such weird spots against these unsafe players where like you would never do the same thing right. against. A safe player. Look, I play against a few unsafe players pretty regularly now. And uh, I mean, I was before too, but now it's like the same unsafe players every time and it's pretty regular. And uh, you just got to sort of be like, all right, we're taking this. We're, we're rolling with this. This is a hand we're rolling with in this spot. Like, and that's that. Like, yeah, I understand it's going to suck sometimes. And sometimes it really does. Sometimes it's like, golly. But, you know. We're just trying to make profitable decisions with incomplete information, and we can't let ourselves get run over by the unsafe players because they will destroy us if we let that happen. Even just taking a stand, even it's it's okay to call and lose sometimes. They see that you're willing to call, you know. Yeah. There's value in that too in the meta game. There is, although we kind of depends on how spewy the unsafe player is. Sometimes we want them to keep doing the thing, you know, like kind of. Like our speculation with um, Art Papazian back in the mm. day, playing against Andy on yeah. Live at the Bike, we were thinking like he was tanking on the river with things that he was always going to call with because he was trying to encourage Andy to keep making these plays. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Like they almost worked. Right, Andy? You got to right. keep trying. Exactly. It's yeah. like, he's calling. What is he doing? Yeah. 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 Totally. Yeah. So anyway, that's how Ferdinand won a $1.1 million dollar pot i promised a seven figure pot well i implied a seven figure pot which to me is a promise anything i imply isn't a promise just know that um and damn it okay we delivered once yeah. again so you have to vote for jonathan in best, the next election because best podcast he promised ever. he promised and he delivered vote for jonathan i will be which, which political position would you like to have I feel like you might make an, a good alderman. I would make a good alderman. Um, I think yeah. I would lead with jetpacks. As your policy? As a policy? A platform. Or platform. Like literally you would make your platform out of jetpacks so after a speech <laughs> you could fly away? You can't fly away out of a platform of jetpacks, you dummy. Uh, uh, no. not, not unless you hire Elon Musk to engineer the perfect <laughs> platform. Okay, okay. touche. Yeah. Checkmate, I suppose. Uh, no, my no. It'd be jetpacks. Obviously, it's 
you seem to think I'm pro jetpack, which is weird. Okay. No, if I, I said if I said murder, you'd be like, oh, you're gonna have a lot of no, dead I guys know, there, so you could. I know you're like, anti traditional flame based jetpack, yeah, but I know you're I pro hydrogen power jetpack. I I'm know not an that idiot. About you. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and, I know and by the way, and water. Water-based jetpacks. Oh, yeah, but you have to be near a body of water for that, and that's just politically we're unfeasible on unless you're in, like, the Florida Keys or something. We're working on are that you, body of water Are you water running thing. in the Florida Keys? You don't want to be a politician in the Florida Keys. I'm in the Caribbean. They kill you and feed you to the alligators. I'm in the Caribbean right now. <laughs> yeah, how many alligators? There's a lot of water is all I'm saying. A lot of water. Yeah. Iguanas and everywhere, so, by the way. Everywhere. Oh, my what God. What is? Iguanas. Iguanas? Are they dangerous? Ooh. No. Are they unsafe iguanas? They are They're absolutely safe, safe, and they're very funny when they run. They're like, uh, and they, they just get yeah. out of your way, so it's not an issue. But they are, they're hanging out. They're, they're an invasive species, and they have invaded. They've successfully invaded Puerto Rico. <laughs> good for them. Ferdinand yeah. has successfully invaded Elton Sang's bank account. Nice. Yeah, that's a good way to end it, and that's yeah. what we're going to do. Good. Music is my sunlight and all I need is one mic And I can show every single MC how it's done right